why you have to learn every day until the rest of your life? I mean, simple analogy is, imagine a person that is so insane and he wakes up in the morning on January 1st and they say, you know what, today I'm going to eat like a three cows and 15 chickens. And therefore, I don't have to eat for the rest of the month or the rest of the year because I'm going to eat everything that I'm going to need for the future. So I don't have to waste time on eating again. So that doesn't make sense because, you know, in order to survive, we have to eat almost every day, right? So I think I would use similar analogy for people, you know, I got my diploma now. Now I don't have to learn anymore. It doesn't make sense. It's just like that person saying, you know, I ate a lot on Monday. I don't have to eat for the rest of the week. A learning should be lifelong because the nutrition for body is food and the nutrition for souls and the mind is knowledge. Therefore, you have to consume knowledge every day to survive and to, to become a better person technically. So I'm going to give you another example why you should learn for the rest of your life. Now, I did a little bit of research in 1800s. 80% of human population and planet, they were doing agriculture, they were farming, right? And if you look at today, it is 30% of people doing agriculture. Now you ask, why this would happen? We have more people, but less, we have more population right now, but we have less population uh, doing farming. It's because of automation, it's because of all these equipments and increased productivity, right? Now, even less people doing production or food production or agriculture, we have enough food for everyone in the world. Therefore, the productivity of agriculture went up. Even though less people are doing agriculture, we all have foods now. What does that mean to you? It means that if you look at all over the industry, right? Now you go to Walmart, you see this self-checkouts, right? You go to Panera Bread, you see this iPad so you can order foods, right? And now you can see... You know, they used to pay truck drivers $100,000 per year to drive truck. Now, self-driving truck is on the roads and they're testing. Even in Silicon Valley, you call Uber, there's no driver in it, right? So I'm just thinking, who can claim the machine will do less quality job in terms of this repetitive process? What is a repetitive process? For example, I would say driving train, operating a train is a repetitive process. You go from going from point A to point B and you have to stop, you have to move. Very predictable, repetitive process. Truck, for example, you, you take off from warehouse, you go to another warehouse, right? So now if you look at it, I'm going to give you an example of truck. You have a truck driver that's getting $100,000 pay, at least. And you have a truck driver that could get into accident. You have a truck driver that could be distracted, could make mistakes, things like that, right? You have a truck driver that has only two eyes to watch what's going on and observe. Now, if you look at the self-driving autonomous technology, it is like watching, like with the sensors and radars and with the cameras, it is impossible for a human being to compete with self-driving truck because self-driving truck is like monitoring 360 degrees, right? For maybe a half mile distance. And a human being can only see in front of what, what's in front of you. So now all of a sudden you have to spend like this machine that will never get tired and work better than human being and get to guess what that will never get paid now if you are a truck driver if you are uber driver if you are a person that is in the market that you have to trade your physical labor that's the question that you need to ask yourself where how is my future look like when the cost of my labor almost becoming becomes zero, what do I do? Like, how do I survive? I mean, people are talking about universal basic income, things like that, but it, that's not going to be the solution. You have to have a new way of life. So what I envision is this, is I believe as the society evolve with technology, empowered by technology, most physical jobs that requires human labor, like driving truck, driving Uber, uh, being a waiter, maybe customer service, right? Maybe accounting, bookkeeping, anything that is predictable and repetitive, less cognitive, will be automated by technology. The, therefore, the cost of those labor becomes zero. No company in the world will pay you $100,000 why they can use a software to do the same job, better, cheaper, more effectively, 
right? So that's kind of comparison. Now, as we're moving to this kind of society, I think the society is the force to move into knowledge economy. So what is knowledge economy? You're literally not selling your labor as you know physical labor. If you're working as a farmer, it's a physical labor. If you're working as data entry, you're typing something, it's a physical labor. If you're working as a truck driver, it's physical labor. If you're working as a waiter, it's a physical labor. The physical labor will go down in terms of demand and a knowledge work will increase. Demand for the knowledge work will increase. What are those? For example, now though that you have to work as a developer, you're not exchanging your physical labor. You're exchanging your, you're trading your competency in programming, problem solving, and you're looking at the problem, certain sets of problem, and you're solving it with your not only coding, problem solving skills and in combining with your coding skills to develop a solution for certain problems. So I think as society moving to that direction, people in the knowledge economy, I would say even now they get more paid. Isn't it a Java developer will get more paid than a waiter in the restaurant or Uber driver in terms of hourly rate? Why? Because one is exchanging their physical labor, another one is using to solve certain problems for the companies, the value is higher, therefore they're getting more paid. So even now, we're, also mo we're already in this direction now. Now because of more automation, more AI, more robots will take over more jobs like manufacturing, right? I think people, in order to survive, more people need to get into a knowledge economy. Now when you're in a knowledge economy, what do you sell? You sell your knowledge. It means that your knowledge is your asset. The more asset you have, have the more you can sell or the higher the, the, you can sell, right? Therefore, as we're moving to knowledge economy and the society is moving very fast in terms of technological advancement, the things that you learned four years ago may not be applicable today. So every time you have new technology coming up, right? So therefore, therefore, in the knowledge economy, one thing that you have to invest in yourself is investing to improve your knowledge. So there are many people, uh, unfortunately, I see we have more than 10,000 alumni at Sideo, and many people, I know them when they're studying in Sideo. I know them once they graduated. I mean, it's human nature. <laughs> it's not a bad thing, but it's human nature. What is the difference? Because people when they were in the labor market and they had to work extremely hard, job is difficult, they don't see as much respect as a, as a knowledge market. So because of th that desperate energy that they have, right, to get into like a six-figure salary, they work extremely hard day and night, really committed to learn certain skill set, right? Let's say coding, problem solving, things like that. Once they get into $100,000 salary, they get comfortable and they they start, you know, they start like they get comfortable too soon, right? But the thing is this, just like they got a job and replaced somebody else that was less competent than they are, right? So now they took the job. They went to interview. The reason that they get $100,000 offer because they outperform other candidates, right? Maybe those candidates, they went to the same interview. They worked for IT company for many years, but they did not improve their skill set. You know what I'm saying? So, so now these people moving out from, let's say, labor market to knowledge market, you know, doubling, tripling their salary after a year, they, they got comfortable too. They don't, they stopped learning. Then guess what's going to happen? The new people coming, they're learning more. They're all performing in terms of learning new skill set better, faster. So these people will be replaced. So now, because of that reason, I think people like even me, right? My, I'm super like, a, how do you call I am like a chaos person for myself. I'm always like, I need to learn more. I need to learn more, right? That mindset helped me to be successful in life, in business and everything. And plus, you know, learning is like mind stimulating. It's cool. Like you're a knowledgeable person, right? You make more money. You are more successful. You're, you're, you're a wiser person, right? So therefore, for those people who are in the comfortable position, if you get comfortable in this world, look at Nokia, how they disappeared from the world. Look at Blockbuster, how they got disappeared. This beautiful memory. Look at all these companies once in the while, once upon a time, they were on the top 
of their success and they get comfortable. Somebody came after them, exceeded them and became super successful on those companies disappeared. Where is Nokia? Was Nokia a best compact company? I miss Nokia, but it was Apple who innovated. It's like innovation. Learning is like innovating yourself. So therefore, I think the future economy is going to be a knowledge economy. In the knowledge economy, your asset is your knowledge. Therefore, investing in your knowledge, improving it every day, learning every year, gain some new skill set every year is going to be crucial for your success. Learn more, earn more for the rest of your life and be happy.